is coming. All these voices. They're not yours. You had no right to them when you were alive, and you have no right to them when you're dead. Huh? What you That's what it sounded like. Good, you know who I am. And you know I'm not playing. You're going to let those women go. In Jesus' name, you're going to let those women go. Is there a demon here watching us right now? Just watching this right now. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Staring Into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr. And with me as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's having a great night. Hello, Misfits. Tonight's show is going to be an interesting one. Tonight's show, we're going to be talking about a theory that I've been working on concerning EMF and paranormal activity. And the basic question that we're going to be trying to answer tonight, or at least discussing, will be, does 5G and Wi-Fi and smart TVs and smart appliances and all those things, does the EMF that they all produce lead to more paranormal sightings? Because we've had a massive uptick in recent years of paranormal sightings, of ghost sightings and, and paranormal phenomena. So is 5G and, and the increase of, of smart everything, is that behind it, the EMF levels that, that all those devices are putting out? Now, when you're talking about 5G, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about 5G, man. There's there's everything under the sun from it's going to kill everybody to it's used as a, a mind control device to where you can control people's mind with 5G, all these different things. So I think a good way to start this one off is going to be to look at some, some actual hard fact, okay? Now, I'm not going to get into a lot of those other conspiracy theories and whether they're true or not and all that, because some of them are ludicrous. Some of them have some merit, you know, and we'll talk about it a little bit, but I'm not going to, this isn't a wingnut show, okay? This isn't one where I'm going to go off the deep end talking about, oh, the reptilians are using 5G to take over your brain, right? This is a, a scientific theory that I'm working on, and I'm going to try to present some evidence tonight and get y'all's opinion as well. So we're going to start this off with some hard fact. Okay, so I'm going to present something to you now. Tonight's article comes from the Journal of Microscopy and Ultrastructure. Um, and underneath that it says, The effects of electromagnetic fields exposure on the antioxidant defense system. And it was written by Elphi Gizm Kivrak. Uh, Kiamet Kubra Yurt and Gamze Alton. Abstract. Technological devices have become essential components of daily life. However, their deleterious effects on the body, particularly on the nervous system, are well known. Electromagnetic fields, EMF, have various chemical effects, including causing deterioration in large molecules in cells and imbalance in ionic equilibrium. Despite being essential for life, oxygen molecules can lead to the generation of hazardous byproducts, known as reactive oxygen species, or ROS, during biological reactions. These reactive oxygen species can damage cellular components, such as proteins, lipids, and DNA. Antioxidant defense systems exist in order to keep free radical formation under control and to prevent their harmful effects on the biological system. Free radical formation can take place in various ways, including ultraviolet light, drugs, lipid oxidation, immunological reactions, radiation, stress, smoking, alcohol, and biochemical redox reactions. Oxidative stress occurs if the antioxidant defense system is unable to prevent the harmful effects of free radicals. Several studies have reported that exposure to EMF results in oxidative stress. 
in many tissues of the body. Exposure to EMF is known to increase free radical concentrations and traceability and can affect the radical couple recombination. The purpose of this review was to highlight the impact of oxidative stress on antioxidant systems. And that is the end of the article. Okay, so now you see what the actual truth is about not only 5G, but all the different forms of, of EMF and what EMF can do to the body. Okay, that oxidative stress that they're talking about, it's producing free radicals, and those free radicals are going to go through your system, and they're going to wreak havoc. Okay, that free radicals are partially responsible for all kinds of different diseases. Uh, it's, a, it's a metabolic breakdown in your body. I mean, it leads to like diabetes, cancer, all kinds of mean, nasty things. So there is no doubt if you're a, a fair-minded person that knows what you're talking about, there is no doubt that EMF has medical consequences for human beings, okay? I'm not saying it's going to kill you tomorrow. I'm not saying it's the worst thing at all. There's safety guidelines where there's acceptable levels of EMF, okay? And each one of these things falls below that level. But we also have to remember the, the cumulative effect. It's very rare that you're going to have just one thing going on at your house, okay? You're not just going to have a 5G telephone. You're also going to have a TV. And that TV, if you bought it within the last five years, is a smart TV that does streaming services and all that kind of stuff. Okay, that's going to emit EMF. Your cell phone emits EMF. Um, you're, if you have, like, smart technology in your home, all that emits EMF. Even the, the, the power lines coming into your home, they emit EMF. Okay, so... The cumulative effect of all of these things, although each one of them might be under the safety guidelines, all of them combined might go over, depending on how much you have in your home, okay? But this isn't a show saying that, that 5G is going to kill you or anything like that. What I'm saying is, if you're even getting close to the safety guidelines, you're getting a high level of EMF, Okay, because it's like 5,000 megahertz or something like that is, is the acceptable limit. So you're getting a pretty high level of EMF cumulative throughout the day. And then you think that's every day, 365 days a year for a lifetime. That's a lot of radiation that you're putting in your body. That's going to have effects, okay? So I want to start this off, even though we're going to be talking about paranormal stuff coming up. So we're not, this isn't a medical show, but I think it's important to, to realize that a lot of those conspiracy theories that talk about EMF being hazardous to your health and 5G being hazardous to your health, more specifically, they're not wrong. I mean, even if it's a, a minuscule, a small effect on your health, it does have an effect. I mean, you just saw from the article. That that is the truth. Okay, it does have an effect. So I want to start off by saying that, so that we're not saying, oh, it's all hogwash or anything like that, because it's not. Okay, I'm also not saying that 5G is going to give you cancer. Okay, the cumulative effect of all of the EMF that comes from your home can have detrimental health effects, especially long term, because you're talking about an cumulative effect over many many years. So that's true. What I'm concerned about with those high levels of EMF is that we know that EMF can cause many different psychological and spiritual appearing effects as well. High levels of EMF can cause hallucinations in some people, especially if your brain is hardwired that way to, to hallucinate. We know that where we find a lot of spiritual activity, we find higher than normal levels of EMF. That's why when you have your little EMF meter and it spikes, you say, okay, there's something here. You know, and then you check that area and you check the wiring there, you check all kinds of different things, see if there's if there's like smart TV or something like that right in that area that could explain why there's a higher level of EMF. And I'm gonna get into here in a minute why 
I believe that we can spot ghosts using EMF. Okay, and that's a very interesting theory. I'll get into that in a second. But the higher than normal levels of EMF that we've been getting since we've been getting all this smart technology, we're being bombarded with a lot more EMF than we used to be bombarded with. So that, I think, can have an effect on the spiritual world. Because if, if we can pick up ghosts with EMS spikes, that means that ghosts are putting off electromagnetic frequencies that can be picked up by our meters. So why is that? Well, here's my theory. Human beings, as well as every other living creature, we're all just energy. Our brain has hundreds of thousands of neurons, probably millions. I don't know the exact number. And synapses are firing. Bam, 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 bam. They're putting off electric pulses inside of our brain. Our mind, our consciousness, who we are, what makes us us, is generated in the brain. So you have to think that what makes us us has to do with EMF, okay? Because without that electricity, you are not going to be able to have a functioning brain, which means you're not going to have a mind. You're not going to have a consciousness. You're not going to be thinking or knowing your place in the universe or any of that. Those electrical impulses are extraordinarily important. We also know that electricity can carry information. So what if when we die, since we are just energy, our body dies, but our consciousness lives on? Okay, that's what a lot of people believe ghosts are. That consciousness is going to be made up of electricity. Okay, that's why ghosts will feed off of your batteries and stuff in order to manifest, in order to talk. They will drain your batteries on your equipment. Everybody who's ever done a paranormal investigation knows this to be true. Energy, in order to amplify, you need two things. You need a bigger speaker and you need more energy. So if you want to boost the power of a stereo, you're going to hook up an amp that's going to give it more wattage. And you're going to put a big old speaker on that thing so that it will amplify that sound that is being made. I think this, basically the same principle is going to apply to us once we die. We are capable of communicating with certain people as a ghost, right? People that have a brain that is is hardwired to accept that frequency. Uh, we call them mediums. But much like the stereo, if you add more wattage and you add amplification to a speaker, which that's what a, a spirit box is, is a speaker connected to a little motherboard that has all the, the little doodads that make it work. So you have the speaker in your spirit box, and you're adding more wattage because the ghost is draining energy from your equipment, from your batteries, all that kind of stuff. So they're gathering electricity in order to amplify that voice. So... Higher levels of EMF all around us are going to produce a atmosphere, okay, that is more energy rich, a more energy rich environment. So if you are a being that feeds on energy, that's using that energy to amplify your voice and to manifest 
both visually and auditorily, right? If you're using that energy to manifest, if you're in a more energy-rich environment, you are more easily going to be able to manifest. So I think the presence of all of the additional EMF that comes from 5G, from every smart TV, every smart appliance, our laptops, our tablets, uh, even our, our game systems, man, they're, they're computers. All of that is, is computers. All that is emitting EMF. So you are walking through a literal pea soup of EMF every day. The air is thick with it. And that environment is incredibly conducive for spirits to be able to manifest. Therefore, you get more activity. With more activity comes more reports of that activity, especially now when the paranormal field has become popular and you have all of these paranormal TV shows on TV. So now it is no longer looked at as you're a kook or you're, you're a crazy person if you say something's happening in your home. <clears throat> now people are, are more familiar with the paranormal, at least on a surface level from these shows. And they're more accepting of paranormal claims. Now you still have a lot of people that, that say it's, it's BS. But the average person out there is more likely to accept somebody saying, hey, man, there's a ghost in my house. You know, there's something weird going on in my house. I'm hearing weird noises, all this kind of stuff. And probably because they're also experiencing something or they have experienced something in their life or they know somebody in their family or, or very close to them that has experienced something. So their, their eyes and their minds are, are more open to the possibilities. So with this energy-rich environment, giving spirits more of an opportunity and more of an ability to manifest, and with a society that is more accepting of paranormal claims, more people are going to be willing to come forward and say, hey, this is going on. So I think that is partially responsible for the uptick in cases, but also I think a big part of it, probably the, the, the majority of it, is all of this extra energy that's floating around. And that is why they're able to manifest. So I told you I was going to talk a little bit about why I think spirits emit EMF and how we're able to pick them up. I kind of touched on a little bit, but I want to get a little bit deeper in that. As I mentioned, our brain has, has electricity in it, okay? There's all kinds of activity going on in our brain. Uh, neurons and, and synapses are firing, and you have these – it's almost like an engine of a car. You have these little sparks that are going off constantly in our brain when we're thinking and when we're doing everything. So I think when, when you die, physics teaches us that you never truly die. You just change form because energy can't die. So – if we change to a form of, of pure energy, okay, whether you believe that to be the soul, the spirit, or whether you just think that we, the energy that is inside of our brains just dissipates over time. So our consciousness will be there for a while and slowly begin to dissipate over time. No matter which one of those you believe, that energy is still left behind. Okay, now it is scientific fact that the human brain does contain EMF. It does emit EMF. So if it's there when you're alive and the energy is still around after you die, because it can't die, it just can only dissipate and go off and spread out. I mean, it's still there. It's just off in the universe now, but it never goes away. So if that is the case, then that EMF that is there in your brain when you're alive is still there in your brain when you're dead. Except for it's not 
limited to the brain anymore. It could hang out in the brain for a while if it wanted to. I mean, I don't know how it works. Maybe it slowly seeps out. Maybe that's why we don't have modern ghosts as much anymore. You know, usually when, when you run into a haunted thing, it's somebody from the past. You know, either somebody from the 1800s or somebody from the early 1900s. It's usually not some teenage girl named, you know, Shannon or something that that died in, in Orange County. And, and she gets on your spirits box and you're like, what's your name? She's like, it's Brittany, bitch. You know, we don't have that happening very often. Although we have had some spirit activity that is actually on the channel where ghosts have been talking about modern music and that they, they really enjoy rap and stuff like that. So you do have some spirits that have come across that are from the modern time. Although I would probably say judging on the references, I would say late 90s, early 2000s is when these spirits were, were around. At least they were talking about music from that era. So maybe there's a, a time frame that it takes for the energy to leave your brain and kind of make its way out into the world. Maybe it takes a week, maybe it takes a month, maybe it takes years. I have no idea. But that could explain why a lot of the, the spirits that we see are from a further away time. That's also another important piece of information. Because if we're working on the theory that ghosts are people, some of them at least are were people that lived and they died and their consciousness is still around. If that's the theory we're operating under, then the fact that we see spirits and ghosts from the 1800s and the 1700s lets us know that at least our energy will stay together for that amount of time. Okay, it may not go all the way back thousands and thousands of years. I don't know. I've never run into a ghost that was from ancient Greece or something like that. You know, I just, I haven't. Usually it kind of ends around the 1700s. Somewhere in the 1700s, mid to late 1700s to the 1800s, that's usually the time frame that you're dealing with with a lot of spirits. And we get a lot from like the 20s and 30s and stuff like that. But I'm talking as far back as it goes is usually mid 1700s is as far back as I've ever, ever talked to. So that tells us that it goes back at least that far. But does that mean that that's as far as it goes back? That's an interesting question. I'll have to do a little research on that and see what the earliest ghost that anybody's ever spoken to is like how long ago did they live has anybody ever talked to somebody from ancient greece or ancient rome on a spirit box or or some other form of communication has anybody ever ever talked to anybody from even before that from way before that you know who knows um i think part of that could potentially be language barrier as well because I've, I've noticed that you only really have spirits come through usually in a language that you speak. Now, we do have them come through and, and speak Spanish sometimes. But we have people on our team that, that speak Spanish. And I can speak a little bit of Spanish. Um, so I have had that happen. And I have had a ghost come through and, and speak German to me once. But I grew up in Germany. So I can speak German. So... It's always a language that I actually am able to speak. Now, I don't know if that's because they want me to understand what they're saying, and they know that if they try to talk to me and I don't speak the language that they speak, how the hell would they know? You know, I mean, how would, how would I know what they're trying to say? But how would they know what language I'm able to understand? That's an interesting question, too. The German spirit that came through and spoke to me, how did he know that I knew German? I wasn't speaking German at the location, so how would they possibly know that I can understand that language? Is it just chance? Was it a coincidence that that happened? Or do they have some way of, of knowing those things? You know, A lot of spirits know things that, that you wouldn't imagine that they would know. Now, 
that gets into another interesting question as well, because some people claim that that ghosts are not people at all. Some people claim that every single ghost is a demon. We've talked about that on this show before. Um, demons do have knowledge that they're not supposed to have. They know things that they're not supposed to know. So maybe that spirit that came through that was speaking German to me, maybe that spirit knew I spoke German because it wasn't just a spirit. You know what I mean? Maybe that was a demonic presence that was trying to communicate with me. That would make sense. But some interesting questions. Let me know down in the comments section uh, when this hits YouTube what you guys think about that whole idea. And why do you think that you only really hear from, from ghosts that, that speak your language, that you never hear a foreign language being spoken to you? That's interesting. And also, how would they know if you never said anything about speaking that language? You know, if you only spoke English the whole time you were there, how would they know you spoke a different language in order to speak in one you understand? That's interesting as well. But there's a lot of a lot of people that, getting back to the, the 5G thing, there's a lot of people that will say, and Old Boy is one of those people. Um, me and Old Boy don't agree on this uh, as far as 5G goes. He's one of those people that, thinks that 5G is completely and, and utterly safe and it's not going to harm you at all because that's what he's been told by the TV. You know, the news tells him that. But if you actually look into it, I mean, I, I read you the study, you know, well, the article about the study uh, from a scientific journal. So you know that is fact. So there's, there's no doubt that it can cause medical issues, no doubt whatsoever. Now, people take that little nugget of truth and they exaggerate the hell out of it. You'll have people making all kinds of outlandish claims. They'll say that because of 5G, you're more apt to get certain illnesses than other illnesses. I'm not going to go into what illnesses and everything like that because I don't feel like getting banned again. But... It is true that that oxidative stress and the presence of a lot of additional free radicals that your body can't handle can lower your immune system. So although I wouldn't say it's a primary cause for getting a lot of those other illnesses that, that the conspiracy people talk about, they're not wrong. They're not 100% wrong on it. I mean, because it can lower your immune system. And anytime your immune system is lowered, you have a better chance of catching whatever the hell it is, you know. But I wouldn't say it's a, it's a primary contributing factor. But it's definitely present. It is, it is there. I mean, you can't deny it. It's true. But, and there's always a but, it varies with each individual person because one, it depends on how good your immune system is in the first place. It depends a lot, believe it or not, on your diet. What are you eating? What pills are you taking? Because one very important thing for overall health, not to mention your, your immune system, but overall health completely is your your microbiome in your gut. So do you have a diet that is causing you to have a healthy microbiome, a bunch of, of good bacteria, okay, that's breaking down food and, and doing good things for you? Or are you eating a diet that is killing your, your gut? Okay, gut health is health. If you don't have a good microbiome in your gut, you're going to have trouble. That's why so many people nowadays are taking probiotics, because the modern diet with all the chemicals and, and preservatives and, and all the horrible stuff we put in our body, the crap we eat, 
is not conducive to good good gut health. And a lot of us are taking like Prilosec and, and those kind of things because we don't feel good, because we don't eat good. You know, if you put crap fuel in, your body's not going to perform. Your body is, is a machine, so to speak. It's like an engine. And if you put bad fuel in your car, your car is going to sputter and die. If you put bad fuel in your body, your body's going to sputter and die. Okay, so a lot of people will will take probiotics to try to reintroduce those good bacteria into their gut because they're killing it off. I mean, stuff like like Prilosec and and those kind of pills they they destroy your 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 gut, man. It's just true, but it's one of those give and takes because you're having a lot of heartburn issues, a lot of GERD issues because you're eating crap. And so you have to take the pill in order to not have like the acid in the back of your throat and the heartburn and the bloating and just the ugh, feeling like crap all the time because you're not eating good. Whereas if you ate a better diet, then that would kind of take care of itself. Okay. You wouldn't have those issues if you had a better diet. So that is definitely a problem that we have as Americans. We all eat crap because crap is easy. We're so busy all the time. I mean, our life is is go, 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 go. So we don't have time to sit around and cook a healthy meal every day. So a lot of people will just grab fast food. You know, let me stop by McDonald's. Let me grab a pizza. Let me grab some, some burritos or something from Taco Bell. And I'll eat those. And it's quick, it's easy, and it fills my belly. But it a lot of that stuff's not very good for you, you know, so you're doing a lot of damage to your body. So one thing is it varies depending on your diet, depending on your immune system and how many free radicals your system is able to tolerate. Because what happens, it's not the free radicals themselves individually that are the problem. Okay, now don't get me wrong, they're not good. But your body can fight that stuff off. It has a built-in defense system to, to take that out. What happens, though, is when you get too much, okay? When you have oxidative stress, you have way too many free radicals that are running through your system and just tearing it up. Your body can't take care of all of them. Imagine the free radicals as an invading army, and your, your system, your immune system, is the defenders of the castle okay you got your white blood cells which are your your awesome troops man those are your your special forces guys right and you only have so many and when you have the horde of, of free radicals coming it gets to a point where the army's too big and it's just going to overrun the defenses no matter how good you are there reaches a point where there's just too many people coming and you can't stop them all. That's what happens is your system gets overloaded with these free radicals and they just storm the castle, dude, and they climb the wall and there's nothing you can do to stop them because there's too damn many of them. You have to cut that number of the, of the army that's invading. Okay. You gotta, you gotta slash them forces, man. You gotta get some of them out of your system. Now there's various cleanses and all that kind of, I'm not going to get into all that. This isn't a health show. But needless to say, that is why it causes the problems that it causes. It's because there's just too many. And when you have high levels of EMF that are leading to more oxidative stress in your body, it's producing more free radicals that's going to already be a lot there from your crap diet and your sedentary lifestyle and, and the fact that you're not doing anything you're supposed to be doing, okay? You're sitting on your butt watching TV, playing video games, eating Twinkies. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. So you already have oxidative stress in your life. I guarantee it. And you already have a ton of free radicals cruising through your body trying to take over your castle. EMF is adding more. Higher levels of EMF is adding more. Every single one of us has a cell phone that emits EMF. Every single one of us has that thing on us at all times. It's in your pocket. It's right next to your skin. That stuff is going right into your body constantly. 
So constantly you're, you're having these free radicals created and your body is doing its best to fight them off, but eventually you're going to lose that battle because the numbers are just too, too large. That's just the truth of it. So to sum up, before I throw over to old boy, the question we started with was, does 5G and smart technology, all this EMF producing technology, and it doesn't have to be smart. I mean, normal electric appliances produce EMF as well. But does all of the extra smart technology we've come out with and the fact Wi-Fi is, is literally shooting EMF into your home, does that have something to do with the increase in paranormal activity? That was the question we're trying to answer. I think yes, absolutely. I think that is the answer to that question. I think that we've proven that tonight. I think that we've proven that not only does EMF create health problems, but also it fuels paranormal activity. And I think it's a pretty shut and dry case. I mean, I'm 100% on this one. You know, I think I started thinking about this several months ago. It was a theory I had in my head that everything around us is smart technology now and everything getting ramped up and it's more and more being beamed through the air. And that's got to have an effect on the body. And then I started thinking, well, why would the effect stop when you die? If you're still around and you're just energy, why wouldn't that boost you and make it more easy for you to manifest? So that's where the theory came from. And I think, I think that it's a sound theory. I think that I would be willing to, to hundred percent say that it's true. Let me know down in the comment section when this hits YouTube what you guys think about it, because I always like to see that. So that was the question that we wanted answered. I think 100% it does. That's my ruling on it. Um, we will see when I throw over to old boy what he thinks about it. I think, I think I'm going to make a prediction, and I don't ever make predictions, but I'm going to make a prediction tonight. I think that old boy will probably be split on it. I think that and, and I'm cheating a little bit because I kind of know what old boy's going to say in a way. I don't know exactly what he's going to say, but I've had conversations with old boy all the time. We're, we're really, really good friends. So we talk all the time. So I kind of know his feelings on it. Probably say that the medical side of it is BS. He'll probably say it's not true and that it's a conspiracy theory. Uh, he's wrong about that. I've proven that tonight with the article, but that's probably what he's going to say. And then I would say that probably on the paranormal side of it, he's going to say that it's possible, uh, that there's a good chance that that's true, because it makes sense. So that's my prediction. We'll see how I do. I don't make predictions for a reason. The reason I don't make predictions is because you never know what people are going to do. Even if you know the person very well, there's a good chance you might be wrong. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, oh boy, go ahead, brother. This is a very interesting one. I don't know a lot about it. I heard a lot about EMF. Um, electronic mag magnetic fields. Um, we'll get into what I my opinion is. I don't know a lot about this. I've heard a lot about the five G four thing G, and I'm gonna be honest. I've read there's oh, this is all not true. Um, it's not dangerous for you. I've read a lot about this. That's conspiracy theories and fake news crap. And um, th I, that's my opinion. It doesn't hurt. It, 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 what I've read, it doesn't hurt you. Wi-Fi doesn't hurt you either. 5G, I heard it's not really that bad. I heard, the only difference is I heard 5G, you can download faster, but you can't. It, it's faster internet, I mean, but download fasting 4G and 4GT, GTE or whatever from Verizon's faster when you're downloading it. But using it, it's like online, it's faster. I don't know. That's what I was reading. Um, again, now, do I think it, it has anything to do with paranormal? I'll get into that in a minute. I was going to talk about this other stuff that we're talking about with EMF. Again, I'm not an expert on this. I know very little, but I know I've read of stuff and read a lot of stuff that there's a lot of conspiracy theories and people, again, fear, don't know what they're talking about and they hear something or read something, an article that's probably not true. Please do your research, guys. Stop believing everything you read. I do a lot of research, so does James. Um, 
it could be, there's always possibility it could be harmful. We don't know everything. Like I said, I'm not an expert. I've read a lot of stuff about it. Um, harmfully wise, it might. You never know, but I really highly doubt it. I think it's just more people who are scared of technology again, like always. They think the big bad end of the world matrix Terminator thing's coming. The funny thing is, so here's the funny thing. They had this robot. It was like a robot that went across the world. Went everywhere. Guess where it got destroyed? Get all the United States. We destroyed it when it went to like Detroit or something. It got destroyed, demolished. We destroyed it. So who's the real monsters? We're worried about people, aliens and, and stuff attacking us when we look what we do. We're, 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 I'm sorry to say the human race are hypocrites. You live, a lot of people live on fear and this is what happens. It's a proven fact. You don't know what it is, so you're scared of it. I, I'm going to tell you about an article, and then we'll get into the EMF thing. We just did that one last week about the, the missing person. The guy, no, he's not missing anymore. He's supposed to be dead. About the Nephilim. Uh, he took the video, and now he's dead. Um, there was people that I put the post on for the show after saying that I'll just pretend it isn't real because then I don't have to worry about my reality. What the truth is, what they're saying is they don't want to know the truth. And I think that's with a lot of people. They want to just be told, force-fed this crap. They don't want to know what's out there. They'd rather live in a normal reality where they think that's what the truth is and nothing else is going on. Remember, you're living on a giant pebble in the ocean. And that's space. We're a little pebble in a giant ocean. All together, even here. But I'm talking about if you look at it in reality. At any time, something can hit us, an asteroid, and destroy this whole world. And we wouldn't know what to do, and there wouldn't be any time to do anything about it. If it's big enough, remember that, guys. Reality is the truth sometimes is hard to swallow. And people don't want to believe it, but it is. That's why they live in a fantasy world. That's why we have the problems we have all together. Because of that. You would rather live, like I've always said, a beautiful lie than the ugly truth. Because it's safer. Back to the EMF. I don't think it's harmful. I've read a lot of stuff about it. It's a lot of conspiracy crap. And, you know, whatever. We'll get off of that. Now, do I think it has anything to do with paranormal? That's a chance. That's a possibility. Maybe that's what... That really does it. The magnetic for the magnetic forces and cause more paranormal activity to happen. You never know. It's very much of a possibility on that one. That I won't argue. You know, a lot of elect uh, electricity and, and 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 magnetic. They say there's a lot of stuff to do with the paranormal. Uh, the entity. They. Uh, I don't know if you guys seen that movie in the '80s where the lady was getting attacked and raped and. Uh, I want to try to keep it PG, guys. You know how we do it. And um, was getting attacked and raped and molested by this stupid entity. Not what well, I'm not saying stupid entity. This evil entity. We don't know what it was, but the, they had this magnetic field that stopped it from. With these uh, back then, they were using these uh, magnetic uh, forces to stop them from him from attacking her, and it did. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe these things don't like electricity. Like Ghostbusters, remember they use electricity to catch the ghost. And they don't like it. Maybe there is something with electricity and magnetic sources. Maybe that and ma magnetic fields. Maybe there is something to do with the paranormal. Maybe that scares them away. Maybe they don't like it. Maybe it's something that destroys them. Maybe it or maybe it attracts them. You never know. We don't know. Maybe it attracts certain ones and it doesn't, and other ones don't like it. It's like different creatures, but these are different. Maybe the magnetic keeps them away or it's something about it that they don't like it. Maybe then there's some that's attracted to it. It lives off the electricity and they thrive on it. Maybe that's what shadow people are. Um, they like the negative uh, magnetic. They they get attracted by it. Like Mothman, remember all that stuff? And then bad things would happen. Maybe then magnetic stuff doesn't bother them like it does with spirits or entities or stuff like that. 
and then the fallen and demon, we, we, we can go into that. That doesn't bother them. Uh, and they communicate over the shadow box, the spirit box, whatever you want to call them. And that's how we get that electronic voice going. And, they, and they're, they're, they're attracted to it. Maybe they're attracted to it. They're not scared of it. They're just attracted to it. And it brings some kind of energy and they feed off of it. Um, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, leave in the comments like we always tell you guys. We always like to hear from you what your guys' opinion on this whole situation. This is a very neat thing. I, I like hearing new stuff. This is another show we're doing. I'm not a big, you know, expert on this. I don't really know a lot. This is a little bit. Now James wanted to do this. We were going to do the show the last time, but the other article came up, so we did, decided to do that show. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Uh, like I said, we always like to hear what you have to say. We love our crowds. We love our fans. Um, what do you guys think? And if you guys are still, no, and I, I, I trimmed up the beard now. It's not as long as it was. Wife did it for me. She did a wonderful job. She's a, my wife's a Jill of all trades. Freaking awesome woman. Love her. Sorry, go back to what we were talking about. Um, what do you guys think? Um, do you think that's what it is? My arm's getting tired, so that's why I'm going like this. Because I've been holding it for like 15, 10 minutes. 15, 10, the 15 to 20 minutes now. And my arm's getting numb. So, um... If you see me moving, that's why I'm doing it. What do you guys think? Uh, I think it could be the EM with with EMF could be something with the ghost. I believe that or spirits or entities or demons. I think it does affect them in some way. Maybe it attracts them. Maybe some of them don't like it. Some of them do. It scares them away. Maybe we can trap some of them with them. Like with Ghostbusters. You remember that, guys? The Ghostbuster movies, they use that kind of... That, tr that magnetic force uh, fields and to to they would use that box and it would collect them. So, you know, we know how the movies go. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think that um, that these ghosts are attracted to EMFs? What do you guys think? I, I mean, I know that 5G conspiracy that it's killing people and I, I just, I'm sorry, I don't. I'm so sick of it, man. The world coming to an end, everything. Everything's going to destroy the world. Woe is me. The world's going to end. I, I'm just so sick of it. It's getting out of hand. You know what? I'm just going to be honest. You know what? If something's going to happen, it's going to happen. There's nothing you can do. You're not supposed to be afraid of this stuff, some of you. You're not supposed to fear anything. But you do. It's so funny. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. But... It could be a possibility with EMFs, with attracting spirits and or keeping evil spirits away. Maybe they're wrong. I know. I'm going to have to look into more of this, guys. I, like I said, I'm not an expert. We could do another show about it down the line, and we probably will because, like I said, we always try to do different uh, – another show or two or three because this could be – this is more – this is becoming a popular subject in conspiracy theories. So you know how that goes. So, you know, that's why we're doing this. I, I think James has been reading about it a little bit. So he wanted to do something about this. And I don't blame him. It's it's something we haven't ever touched on. We haven't never talked about EMFs too much other than a little bit here and there. And now we're kind of doing a whole show about it. And that's kind of cool. So something new, something new, something different that we can do. And we're doing it for you guys. Cause we like to do different stuff, guys. And we like to do it for you. My opinion is there's a possibility it is affecting and making more paranormal activity happen and more things going on and maybe has something to do with a multi uh, multi universe, uh, another dimension. Maybe it's causing problems with that. A, a ripped in time. You never know. Um, they're messing with time as it is. We all know that. If you guys watch Stranger Things, that has to do, to do with MK Ultra, and that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to get any more of that. But I believe they're doing stuff. You never know. Somebody's doing something somewhere. I'm not going to say who and I'm not going to bring it up because we know how that goes. But other than that, I want to thank James for letting me have a couple minutes for this. I don't really know a lot about this. That's why I said I'm not going to say too much about it. I'll do a little bit about it just to get, you know, my opinion out there. Because I always like to give my opinions, guys. And I love when you guys like to hear it. So I hope you guys enjoy this show we try to do for you guys tell us what you guys think like i said always give us ideas always leave your comments and your opinions on this stuff um like kind of want to read more about it i've been reading a couple weeks now and it's kind of interesting um could be 
Could be. Could be something that down the line could be more f research could be done and we could actually have something here with this. Does it have something to do with paranormal, other dimensions, attracting things? Maybe it could be a weapon to use. Maybe it could be something we can use on paranormal investigations and ghost hunting, you know, and equipment. It always Equipment could always be, a, you know, um, a thing we could talk about. It could be a new equipment we can use on radar, tra tracking these things, knowing when they're keeping them attacking people. I don't know. Stuff like that. That would be a very interesting uh, thing I can understand that we could use it as a new weapon or a new device, a new toy, you know, I'm not saying toy for us, but it's not a toy. I shouldn't have said that, but you know what I mean? Um, a new weapon against bad things, maybe, but maybe it can help that spirits are stuck. People who were murdered or unjustly killed or died in a tragic way and they want out and they want to go to the other side and maybe that's how we help them. Or maybe they're hiding from the other side. We don't know. We don't know what's going on, guys. Like, the EMF thing is is a very interesting thing. I know there's a lot about it, especially with conspiracy theories. And now the whole ghosting and paranormal thing, that's kind of cool. So you, you got to put that into a perspective. Um, but that's all I really know. I don't know too much about this. So, like I said, I don't want to say too much and sound like an idiot. So <laughs> there you go, James. That's my opinion. Um, it could be a possibility. But I hope you guys have a good night. And there you go, brother. Thank you, brother. Hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. It was definitely an interesting one. Let me know down in the comment section. Once it hits YouTube, youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. If you're listening on the radio, shameless plug. What you guys think? I'm always interested to know. As always, it's up to you to make up your own mind about this. But I hope that you enjoyed the show. And we'll catch you on the next one. Until we speak to you again. Love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do we. Bye-bye.